What's up guys, Yu Fang here, and uh, beside me I have my 2020 Tacoma that we've been working on at Y Motorsport here for a while. And uh, we've pretty much done just about everything you can to a pre-runner truck before caging the truck and uh, back halfing it and linking it. Um, and today I'm gonna unveil it and give you guys the full in-depth tour of this uh, Tacoma. So we're now at the front of the truck and uh, I wanna show you guys the pre-runner bumper that we made here. This is all two inch 120 wall construction, uh, chromoly. And uh, we TIG welded the whole bumper. It's also 100% bolt-on. We retained all the factory mounting points such as this one. And um, we tied it into the lower pivots, which we'll talk about in a second. But this is a quarter inch aluminum skid plate using all stainless fasteners to hold it on. Um, and we have some S2s for lighting on the front bumper, as well as these uh, 2020 and up TRD Pro LED headlights. These are actually super bright. They supplement all the Baja Design LEDs uh, really well, and it's actually a complete different lighting with, um, with or without these high beams on. Um, these are uh, the Racer Edition Squadrons that we have on top of the hood. Coming to the suspension now, we use a Solo XLT uh, long travel kit, and it's a four and a half inch wider per side long travel kit that lets you retain four wheel drive. So how we got this kit to work, we had to make a little bit of our own little spin on it. Um, we cut the upper uh, shock mounts off the truck completely. Uh, Solo Motorsports provides a shock hoop so we welded that in and now it allows us to use a 10 inch coilover and a 10 inch uh, bypass as well. The coilover is 2.5 inches and the bypass is a 3.0. Um, we have a Dana 44 hub uh, with manual locking hubs and it uses a uh, custom axle that has the U-joint on the outside and a Porsche 934, I think it's a 934 CV that connects it to the front differential on the stock Tacoma. Every single bolt that we use for holding the front suspension together is uh, zinc 12 point. Um, we like 12 point fasteners just because we believe the quality of fastener is just that little bit higher than um, a hex bolt. It is all grade eight stuff, but um, the tensile strength on a 12 point is usually a little bit higher. Um, let's come down here to take a look at our steering setup. We're running a Tundra steering rack, uh, which took a bunch of work to actually get it to fit because the Tacoma and Tundra rack are, are completely different. It uses different mounting locations. The spread between the holes on the bushings are different. Um, and what we did is on the cross member, we pretty much cut the slugs that hold the, the standard Tacoma rack out and we put in billet ones uh, that we made ourselves, as well as we plated the whole cross member with chromoly. Um, and now the spread of the bushings, the holes are, are perfectly at, at the right width for the Tundra rack. And we also brought the rack forward 14 millimeters from where it was stock, so that we would have the tie rod be uh, pretty much parallel and square with the lower control arm so that we don't have uh, we have minimal bump steer throughout the cycle of uh, the suspension travel. Um, in addition to moving the rack further forward, we had to do a lot of uh, work on the differential um, mounting points to make clearance so that the diff can still be mounted because the mounting points are actually in the way of being able to move the rack further forward. So I'm gonna be showing you guys that in a second, but that's gonna, uh, it's a really trick part of the, the truck that we'll take a look at when we lift it up. For our wheel and tire package, we're using Innovate Racing bead locks. Um, these have all ARP fasteners so that we don't, we're using the strongest stuff and we don't have to go and check it all the time because I believe the ARP stuff is, is a little bit stronger than, um, especially grade eight. Um, it's a 37 inch general grabber. And the way that we're actually able to make this tire package work is we actually have, if we will come back down here, we actually have uh, a JD fabrication kit for the lower pivots. And what that does is we chopped our standard lower pivots off 
um, welded on these quarter inch thick pivots that have these uh, special cams. So the way they designed the cam is it can now be um, drilled and bolted in to this plate right here. So that's gonna make it just that much of a um, stronger hold for the cam so that when you're off-roading and stuff, the cam doesn't get out of a alignment. Um, but anyways, that, that uh, lower pivot is allowing us to move the lower control arm forward one inch. So that's given us enough room for the tire to be able uh, to turn lock to lock without rubbing the cab mount. And we could actually go quite high up into the suspension travel at lock before it rubs the cab. We have uh, McNeil Racing fiberglass to cover up the big track width of the, of the truck. It's a six inch wide fender that uses the stock mounting locations for the most part. And then we created uh, these locations here and here um, just to give it that extra bit of reinforcement. Coming further back on the truck, we have these TIG welded sliders uh, that are powder coated black. Most pre-runner trucks generally don't have any rock sliders, but the way that I like to drive the truck and just having the sliders, I think is, is really nice um, in case you ever get into a trail where there's a, you know, a big boulder that you have to navigate around, it'll protect your cap. The bed sides are also made by McNeil Racing. These are the six inch wide uh, bed sides and they don't actually have an access port for the gas filler neck. So what we did is um, we relocated the gas filler neck to the top of the top of the bedside. And the way that we've done that is we have um, this racing style filler cap here uh, with, you know, this is the removable um, piece. And we have a gas filler tube, uh, just like a rubber type of clear tube that goes to a stainless pipe that we welded onto the original gas filler neck. And, that completes um, how we refill the truck. The wheel and tire package in the uh, back is the same as the front. We're actually using 5.8 studs front to rear, uh, front and rear. That's why they have the uh, yellow nuts on there. It's a bigger, much bigger stud than what the Tacoma came with stock. And the wheel on the back here is mounted to a curry axle, which we'll also look at in a second. Um, but let's touch on the suspension first. So the suspension back here, we're using a Dirt King uh, shackle and hanger, and we have a Deaver uh, spring under setup with our own um, clasp, if you will, that holds the leaf spring onto the axle. Um, it's all 12 point hardware. We even swapped out the bolts on the leaf pack to 12 point. Um, as I said, just, just because we believe the 12 points is a higher grade of uh, hardware. Um, and what we did with it was we put it on our custom bed rack that we made here to hold these 16 by three and a half inch bypasses. This setup is a bit custom um, because we had to lean the shocks in to get the clearance for uh, tire on up travel because when these trucks, especially with leaf springs, when one side is at droop and one side is at full compression, the tire will like to rub the shock. So we try to move it as close as we can to prevent that. Um, and we were able to accomplish that by making our custom uh, bed cage, all two inch 120 wall construction. It's welded directly to the chassis and uh, it's still removable using um, tube connectors. We've leaned the shock so far in that it's now getting into the wheel arch on the bed sides. So we have those aluminum covers to cover that up so the bed is still usable and you don't have items just falling uh, through the holes that we cut on the bed. We also have a transmission and engine oil cooler on the back. Those are from CBR and they have uh, 12 inch small fans on them. They're fed fluid from these Tilton pumps that are right in front of the, uh, the bed underneath the bed cage. And uh, that's helping a lot because especially for the engine, the wet sump uh, oil pump doesn't have the power to bring all that engine oil back here. So we have a thermostat actually under the truck. It opens at 205 degree Fahrenheit. When that thermostat opens, we flip the pump on and now our oil is getting cooled down with these coolers. We also have a fire extinguisher um, also attached to the bed cage. God forbid we actually have to use it, but it's there in case we need it. Um, at Baja Design S2s, um, Amber's in the back, uh, just you know to make sure that we never 
get nailed um, in the dust or anything like that. A Meso Customs third brake light with uh, KC Cyclones that have a, uh, it's actually got a radio antenna um, mount that is fitted directly to that piece and it's all 3D printed, a very really, uh, a really nice piece that um, makes everything just come together. For our spare, we have one spare. It's a lay down spare on a uh, three-way ratchet strap. And we have that mounted directly to the bed. So these Tacoma beds, um, they're composite, but it's actually very strong. So we were able to mount the batteries and the jack directly to the composite bed. Um, we went with a dual battery setup just to have a little bit more um, power if we need it. And it's fed through the battery cables that bring it to the, to the front of the truck. And we have these billet terminals on them as well. The jack is a Pro Eagle um, that is held on by this Solo Motorsports uh, quick release mount that has this uh, lever right here. You pull that out and the jack comes right out. The Tacomas are pretty notorious for having a lot of bed flex, especially when you make it a pre-runner. So we use these Total Chaos bed stiffeners. Um, these are really nice because it goes all the way up here to the highest point on the, on the bed. Um, and um, they also have all these little holes that you could put tie downs and accessories and stuff like that. Um, the unfortunate thing with the Tacoma bed size from McNeil is we did have to trim this quite a bit. So this hole is now open. I might end up having to close that up at some point. Um, but let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the rear bumper. This is a rear bumper from Missoula and we put our own little touch to it. It's got a hidden hitch back here. Um, and to make that actually all work because the Missoula bumper is not designed to accept a hitch or anything like that, we plated the whole back of the frame horn with quarter inch chromoly. Then we made custom plates also made out of chromoly that attach to the back side of the bumper here. And those are attached with three quarter inch 12 point bolts. So it's a super rigid mount to the uh, to put the rear bumper directly onto the frame. And then it runs a brace. Um, it's a two inch 120 wall tube uh, across the whole span of the bumper. And that ties in to the hitch actually that is uh, welded flush to the back of the, the plate right there. And then we also have our trailer brake um, right there. And that makes it a very hidden and I think unique setup that, you know, whenever we need to tow something, cause we have a bunch of race cars around the shop. Um, it just, uh, all we gotta do is remove the plate. Now let's go take a look at the interior on the truck. And here you can see again, just more 12 point fasteners that we used. Let's open it up. The interior for me, it was very important to try to keep it as basic as possible. Um, but we have these uh, PRP seat covers here. And I think the coolest thing that we've done is we put a hydraulic handbrake in here. Um, it runs in line and has the lines coming through the uh, bulkheads, which you'll be able to see once we lift the truck up here in a second. But um, that handbrake is super useful in the dirt and it just makes it that much more fun. To control all of our lighting and uh, all the accessories such as the pumps and the fans, we have a uh, eight button switch pros right here. And that's mounted with a SDHQ panel, which makes it look almost like OEM. Let's take a look under the hood. We're running a Magnuson supercharger underneath the hood here. And um, this is very crucial because driving the truck, you could definitely feel how much the 37s kind of weigh the truck down. And this is already an underpowered truck. So this kind of brings it back to that original stock Tacoma feeling. We have a UMP filter on here, um, just to give it that extra filtration in case we're doing a long off-road trip. And uh, for the Solo XLT kit, we had to move this fuse box higher. So that included making a whole new mount for the fuse box, as well as rewiring a bunch of stuff. So we took the opportunity to kind of move a lot of the aftermarket wiring and systems on top of the fuse box. And uh, you can see the switch pros on there. We have our bus bars, a little, little fuse block, a, a little fuse block, as well as uh, some circuit breakers. Um, 
A lot of the truck actually had to be rewired, especially in the front end. If you come to this side right here, the harness uh, that used to reside in this area, uh, we had to take it apart and extend and shorten some of the wires to be able to have it kind of wrap around the, um, the shock hoop that you see here um, to be able to have uh, clearance for the tire on up travel. There's a strut brace that ties both of the uh, shock towers together. And this is made out of inch and a half 120 chromoly on tube connectors. And we got very lucky because on the back of the Magnuson Supercharger, there's a little channel that the tube fit right across and it, it looks very beautiful in my opinion. We also have our stainless brake line um, that comes across from the master over to the right front corner. We actually deleted the ABS system completely from the truck. So the solenoid that used to reside here is gone and um, the truck is now uh, running all of our custom uh, stainless steel brake lines. With the supercharger system, it also has an additional radiator here and a water pump that um, is on all the time to keep the supercharger cool because the intercooler is actually within this cover. Um, so it doesn't have the best cooling abilities. So um, this, uh, this setup helps it a bit. And um, for the front end, we also have the harness for the uh, hood lights right there going along the cowl. And all of our wiring has this abrasive material on it as well as um, heat shrink dents. To make everything work, we actually had to relocate a few more additional items. The most uh, obvious one is gonna be this nav sensor right here. So this used to be attached to the air box, uh, the plastic one that came on the stock Tacoma. Nobody made anything to adapt this to an aluminum pipe, so we made a billet uh, map sensor bunk, and that's welded to this piece of pipe right here. We also had to move the dipstick uh, slightly to still be able to pull it out while having this filter right here. The power steering reservoir is now this um, black unit right here, and as well as the windshield wiper fluid is also one of these little reservoirs from Chase Base. A luxury item that we added to the truck just because when you're off-roading sometimes you're opening the hood a lot just to check everything or for whatever other reason we have these uh, hood struts right here these gas gas struts and uh, they open so smoothly and it just makes having to reach for this um, you know it, it's it's much more convenient than the original hood prop the way that we mounted the uh, the grill right here is um, we use these uh, aluminum bushings that actually tie into this, uh, I guess you could call this kind of like a little core support right here. So um, we lost the points to mount the bottom when we removed the OEM front bumper and we didn't want this guy to be flapping around so it's mounted extremely rigid right now. And um, the whole front end for the most part, all the body work is uh, mounted really rigid and it's not anything that's gonna be flopping around in the desert. Because we got rid of the drum brakes in the back of the truck, we're now running a Tundra master cylinder, which is more uh, fitted to run a disc setup in the back of the truck. And that was done using an adapter from SOS Performance. And uh, we have a Chase Bay's brake bias adjuster right here. And how this works is it's limiting the line pressure going to the back brakes um, so that we're able to have a um, brake booster and not have to have a bias bar. So we got the truck up in the air now and uh, let's revisit the rear bumper so that you guys can get a better look at the structure down here. Um, this is the bracing that uh, we spoke about that braces the actual hitch which is sunk in behind this plate here. And this is the two inch uh, 120 chromoly tube coming from these quarter inch chromoly plates um, that attach to the bumper. And it attaches on two planes right here. So on this side and on this side and we got these three quarter 12 point through bolts um, that hold this assembly together very strong so that we could actually be able to uh, tow with this. So uh, let's come to the leaf pack here. We got some 12 points that we replace um, the standard hardware with. Um, these are the shackles and hangers. So we also have this chromoly structure right here 
that is bracing the hangers. So right here, two inch 120 uh, tube to uh, inch and a half 120 um, tubing. And that will uh, triangulate that into the uh, chassis. So this is our Curry uh, three and a half inch full floater rear end, 35 spline axles with a Detroit limited slip differential. We did all stainless lines um, for the brakes back here and uh, everything is tucked um, up top so that we're not getting any uh, rocks that are gonna hit it or anything like that. And we actually did this, um, the OEM style, which is the brake lines, the soft lines are coming in from the back off of a bulkhead that we made for the, um, the hard lines up there. We have some little loops here for the brake calipers, just so if you remove the brake caliper, you actually have some line to be able to move the, the brake caliper around without having to disconnect anything. Um, we did a very unique way to mount the actual leaf spring to the axle. And uh, this is gonna be a 5 8 bolt right here. Um, we sunk these, uh, these sleeves into the actual truss and on the front side of the, the axle. Um, so we don't use U-bolts anymore. And in my opinion, this is a much stronger design. And the biggest benefit and the biggest reason that we did this is this truss is 100% sealed. So with a U-bolt, you would have to have a little bit of a exposed incision, which rainwater and um, things can collect. And inside the truss, it's not painted. So you would get corrosion over time. And that's something that I absolutely didn't want. So we went with uh, this concept right here and it, it worked out fantastic. Um, let's uh, move over here. You could see the two by two bump stops that are up there. And uh, that's actually utilizing the Dirt King um, weld on bracket that we modified uh, to move that bump stop a bit further back because the way that our axle is articulating up, it's not utilizing the C notch the same way that it would be with a um, stock axle. So that, that's a uh, move back to compensate. Uh, coming up here, the drive shaft had to be modified because um, the Curry rear end uses this 1350 U joint instead of the original Tacoma style of uh, mounting. It's like a flat flange that you have four bolts that bolt into. Um, and not to mention, this is actually running 529 gears uh, to match the 529s in the front differential. But uh, this drive shaft was modified and we're using a, I believe this is a Silverado carrier bearing. Um, we use quarter inch chromoly tabs to mount it to the OEM uh, mounting points, uh, which worked out very well. And we catted out all the pinion angles to make sure all throughout the articulation, our pinion angles are correct. So this is, uh, this is actually moved downward slightly, I believe to compensate um, for the uh, pinion angle now with um, our suspension set up in the back. One of the most trick things um, <clears throat> about this truck is the way that we have all the hoses for the coolers done. And actually, let's come up here real quick. I wanna show you guys um, the bulkhead for all the fittings and the lines. So if you could get a shot up in there, you could see all the lines bulkhead into the side of the bed. And um, these lines are made by our good friend, Brendan at Dime PSI. Every single line on this truck is crimped and pressure tested. He also serializes every line in the, in the truck. So I could call him at any time and I could tell him, hey, Brendan, I need our transmission cooler line, the feed line, and he could make that for us and uh, we could pick it up the same day. So that's all motorsport tech um, that we kind of put into this truck. It's all heat sleeve. Uh, here we have our improved racing thermostat, which we rebuilt to open at 205 degree Fahrenheit. We put some uh, nut certs into the, into the frame there to hold these P-clamps on, to hold the lines. Um, they're pretty much tucked as far away from the exhaust as we can manage. It's still very close to some points, but we haven't noticed any sort of um, heating issues. It's running a uh, stock exhaust. If we will move back here with just a turn down tip that actually uh, we painted with steel it. 
And um, the tip is actually, you can see the steel, it's starting to change into a charcoal color from, from the heat. And actually another thing that we had to relocate to make this whole setup work is on the newer Tacomas, they have this canister here um, that used to sit right here. So we made a bracket to position it to the left side so that the center of the axle on bump is not hitting it. And uh, we, we routed this hose to still make all the emissions and, and everything work. Um, so uh, yeah, let's keep moving forward on the truck. We could see more of the stainless brake line work right here, um, tying into the original bulkhead that would have uh, accepted the, the handbrake cables. So those are running brake lines now. Um, and we're using one section of stock uh, brake line, just the section that runs along the frame here. Um, and everything else is, is custom stainless that we made ourselves. And all the fittings that we're using are Earl's. Um, on the axle, we use stainless uh, fittings. And then for the rest of the truck, we use blue uh, anodized aluminum. So here we can get a, uh, another look at how we did the skid plate down here. This is also integrated into the JD Fab uh, lower pivot um, kit that they have. This is a 3 16 aluminum. Um, and uh, this is the skid plate for the underside of the, uh, the motor. And we can also get a good look at the uh, Solo Motorsports uh, long travel kit here. Here's the three two bypasses. We have a fin reservoir on the, the bypasses in the front um, and the axle, we could see the 934 CV over here with, uh, we have some AGM uh, CV savers in there to keep all the grease together. And the CV hopefully lasts a bit longer. Um, big stop tech calipers, which we touched on with a bigger brake disc. Let's uh, pull this skid plate down here so that we could get a good look at what we did for the differential to uh, actually make this whole setup work. We pulled the skid plate off the bottom of the truck now and we could get a pretty good look at uh, what's going on down here. So this guy and this guy right here, this is all billet 4140 chromoly and uh, it's no longer utilizing the stock differential mounts up front because of what we did with the relocation of the rack. This right here is the uh, chromoly frame plating that we talked about on the bottom of the uh, cross member here. So we actually cut the jack point off prior and we saved it and we welded it back on after this guy was plated. And then we have these tabs um, which pick up off of these uh, billet mounts for the, for the diff. And that's how this whole setup works um, to make our rack be in the position that it is because otherwise it would be impossible um, to move the tundra rack further forward and we would have a huge amount of bumps here and just a bunch of issues that we wouldn't really like. Um, and uh, we could also see, uh, get a better look at the JD Fab uh, pivots down here. Um, this is the tube that is uh, tied into our front bumper. And uh, this is, I believe, inch and a half. Um, so that's the big difference between the sizes here, the two inch and the inch and a half. Something very unique that we did um, just to have an extra bit of precision is when we welded these uh, JD Fab lower pivots in, uh, because of weld distortion, you're gonna have a very small amount of movement um, between the width uh, of the tabs. So on every single bushing and spacer for the lower control arm, they're different uh, thicknesses and they are measured precisely to give the lower control arm the best amount of articulation when it's clamped down. And we've also done the same thing with the sleeve that goes inside the uh, lower control arm bushing. We've sized those precisely to um, each individual mounting point so that the articulation, everything is, uh, is gonna be smooth. And that's a little trick uh, from road racing that we put into this truck. Um, yeah, just to, just to give it that extra little bit of um, confidence for our suspensions is gonna be working uh, as we want it. That pretty much wraps up the tour of the truck. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Um, a lot more content to come with this truck for sure. We still gotta go out in the desert, test it, tune it, take it on a bunch of adventures. And uh, we're gonna be filming all that stuff. So I hope you guys stick around and uh, thank you for watching.